For our today's lesson, we are going to read a story. But before we start on reading the story, first, let's study some vocabulary words that we will encounter later on as we read the story. For our first word, sled. A sled is a small lightweight vehicle either on runners or having a smooth bottom surface used for sliding downhill over snow or ice. Example of a sled is that thing used by the dogs. They are very cute. Our next word is marooned. Marooned means to leave someone trapped and isolated in an inaccessible place, especially an island. Example are those fishmen clip from SpongeBob SquarePants. Funny, aren't they? Next word is wearily. Wearily means cautiously or carefully. Are you an otaku like me? Why did I ask? Because our example for this word is Sukoshi Kaminari Hotaru from the anime The Alloyed Generation. Observe how she wearily releases the butterfly from her hand. She needs to be careful so that she will not crush the butterfly. Next is gnawing. Gnawing came from the verb gnaw, which means to bite or nibble. Like what that giant dog does to Sakata Gintoki's head from the anime Gintama. By the way, don't let a dog do that to you or else you might have rabies. Our fifth vocabulary word is scars. It means insufficient, especially of food, money, or some other resource. Just like what Mr. Krabs says. He looks very troubled because his restaurant scars in customers. Next word is devouring. It means the action of eating something hungrily or quickly, like what Luffy does. By the way, don't do what he does. Eat your food properly. Chew them slowly and carefully. Our next word is awkward. Awkward means causing or feeling embarrassment or inconvenience. Our example is clip from the anime Watashiga Motote the Sonda. <sighs> Very difficult to pronounce. If you know the right pronunciation, please comment down below. Anyway, here our character Kae Serinuma feels very awkward when she heard two guys talking about strange things. I honestly really don't know what they are talking about. If you do, you can comment it down below. Next vocabulary word is iceberg. An iceberg is a large floating mass of ice detached from a glacier or ice sheet and carried out to the sea. You see that this big mountain of ice is the glacier and that part which fell from it becomes an iceberg. Iceberg is actually bigger than you think. What you see on the water is actually the smaller portion of it. What's under the water is actually the larger part of the ice. That's why iceberg is usually used to illustrate success. People only see the success of other people so they tend to judge. But the truth is they don't really know what those successful people been through. So the moral lesson is, don't judge. Just like in It Bulaga, Philippines' longest running noontime show. Bawal judgmental. Our next word is aroused. Aroused means awaken. Can be a feeling, emotion, or response. Our example is Kyoko Toshino, main character in an anime entitled Yuru Yuri Happy Go Lily. That reaction of her shows that her excitement aroused because of something. Honestly, I didn't know what made her excited here. If you know what made her excitement aroused here, comment it down below. Our next vocabulary word is wine. Wine means give or make a long, 
high pitch complaining cry or sound this guy is our example i don't know why he is whining here i didn't even know his name but i'm sure he is one of the bts guys if you know his name and why he looks like this or is there anything that bothers him here comment it down below next word is feebly feebly means in a way that lacks strength or force example is this white bunny he stands feebly poor little bunny next vocabulary word is gleaming gleaming means reflecting light typically because very clean or polished it, it it is made of a smooth surface our example is this diamond sword the sunlight is gleaming on it do you know who owns this sword if you do comment it down below our last vocabulary word for today is quivering quivering means the action of trembling or shaking with a slight rapid motion here's our final example look at Jim Parsons lips his lips are quivering best quivering lips that only Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory can make. Do you have a pet at home? Do you mind if you tell us its name via leaving a comment down below and sharing to us your most memorable experience with it? Why did I ask? I asked that because our story for today is about a boy with a very tragic yet memorable experience with his pet. Before we proceed with the story, remember our standards in reading a story. By the way, you can read the story as I read it. I also include in this video the text of the story so that you can read it with me. You also have the option to listen as I read it and read it silently as the video goes on. Standards in reading a story Number 1. Read aloud with expressions if you're going to read it with me. Number 2. Stop at periods and pause at commas. Number three, group the words correctly. Four, pronounce the words clearly. Five, listen to the story very carefully. If you choose to just listen as I read the story and read it with your eyes only. And finally, take down notes of important details so don't forget to get a pen and paper with you so that you can list down all the important information as we read the story the title of the story that we are going to read is two were left based on the title of the story remember these following questions watch out for the answers as we read this story again take down notes of important details one what is the pet of the boy in the story two what is the name of the boy and his pet three where were the boy and his pet left at two were left by Hugh B. Cave. On the third night of hunger, Noni thought of the dog. Nothing lived upon that floating island of ice except himself and the dog. When the ice broke up, Noni had lost his sled, his food, his furs, even his knife. He had saved only Nimuk his great devoted husky and now the two completely alone marooned on the ice 
eyed each other wearily. Noni's love for Nimuk was real, very real. It was as real as hunger and cold nights and the gnawing pain of his injured leg. But the men of his village killed their dogs when food was scarce, didn't they? And they killed them without thinking about it twice. He told himself that Nimuk, when hungry enough, would begin to seek food. One of us will soon be devouring the other. Noni thought. So. He could not kill the dog with his bare hands. Nimuk was powerful and much less tired than he. A weapon, then, was needed. Noni took off his mittens and unstrapped the brace from his injured leg. When he had hurt his leg a few weeks before, he had made the brace from bits of harness and two thin strips of iron. He kneeled and wedged one of the iron strips into a crack in the ice. Then he began to rub the other iron strip against it with firm, slow strokes. Nimuk watched him, and it seemed to Noni that the dog's eyes glowed more brightly. He kept working, trying not to remember why. The strip of iron had an edge now. It had begun to take shape. By daylight, his task was complete. He had finished making a knife. Noni pulled the knife from the ice and felt its edge. The sun's glare reflected from it. Its brightness stabbed at his eyes and for an instant blinded him momentarily. Noni forced himself to call the dog. Here, Nimuk, he called softly. The dog suspiciously watched him. Come here, Noni called. Nemo came closer. Noni saw fear in the animal's gaze. He could see hunger and suffering in the animal's labored breathing and awkward movements. Noni's heart wept. He hated himself and fought against it. Closer Nemo came, aware of Noni's intentions. Now, Noni felt a thickening in his throat. He saw the dog's eyes and they were pools of suffering. Now! Now was the time to strike! A great sob shook Noni's kneeling body. He cursed the knife. He swayed blindly and threw the knife far away from him. With empty hands outstretched, he stumbled toward the dog and fell. The dog growled as he circled the boy's body, and now Noni was sick with fear. In flinging away the knife, he had left himself defenseless. He was too weak to crawl after it now. He was at Nimuk's mercy, and Nimuk was hungry. The dog had circled him and was creeping up from behind him. Noni heard a rattle in the animal's throat. Noni shut his eyes, praying that the attack might be swift. He felt the dog's feet against his leg. The hot rush of Nimuk's breath against his neck. A scream gathered in the boy's throat. Then he felt the dog's hot tongue licking his face. Noni's eyes opened, crying softly. He thrust out an arm and drew the dog's head down against his own. The plane came out of the south an hour later. 
its pilot was a young man in the Coast Patrol. He looked down and saw the large floating iceberg and he saw something flashing. The sun was gleaming off of something shiny which moved. His curiosity aroused. The pilot circled and flew lower. Now he saw, in the shadow of the mountain of ice, a dark, still shape that appeared to be human. Or were there two shapes? He set his seaplane down on the water and investigated. There were two shapes, a boy and a dog. The boy was unconscious but alive. The dog whined feebly but was too weak to move. The gleaming object which had caught the pilot's attention was a crudely made knife. It was stuck point down into the ice a short distance away and was quivering in the wind. Now, let us answer the three questions that we hung earlier. 1. What is the pet of the boy in the story? 2. The pet of the boy in the story is a dog, a Siberian husky. If that is your answer, you are correct! <laughs> Two, what is the name of the boy and his pet? Noni is the name of the boy and his pet's name is Nimuk. If that is your answer, again, you are correct! Three. Where were the boy and his pet left at? They were left on a floating island of ice, on an iceberg. If that is your answer, again, you are correct! You did a good job! Now, let's see if you really take down notes of the important details as we read the story a while ago. I want you to get a pen and paper and answer these following questions about the story. 1. How did Noni feel about Nimuk and himself? 2. Why did Noni make a knife? 3. Why do you think Noni stopped his plan to strike Nimuk? 4. Why did Nimuk still come closer to Noni even if Nimuk knew that Noni had a plan to attack him? 5. Describe the relationship between Noni and Nimuk. I will now give you 5 minutes to answer these 5 questions. Write your answer on a piece of paper, then later on, we'll check it together. Don't fast forward this video. Don't make a fool of yourself. No cheating and answers only. No need to copy and answer. Timer starts now!
times up. Okay, now let us check. Number one, Noni loved Nimuk as real as his hunger, cold nights, and the gnawing pain of his injured leg. Two, Noni made a knife because he thought that when Nimuk is hungry, it will begin to seek food and one of them will soon be devouring the other. But he could not kill the dog with his bare hands and that it is more powerful and much less tired than him. 3. Noni stopped his plan to strike Nimuk because his heart wept when he saw the dog's condition. Yes, he hated himself. He fought with it, but still, his love for the dog prevailed as he loved his dog very real. 4. Nimuk still came closer to Noni even it knew his master's plan. He did it because he also loved and trusts his master. Thus, Nimuk saw that Noni threw the knife away from him. 5. Noni and Nimuk's relationship is an example of the saying that dogs is a man's best friend, even though they were marooned on an island of ice, their love for each other overcome the challenges they've been through and their hunger. They truly love each other. If you have the same answers or even just somewhat close to my answers, then you are correct! <laughs> If you did not answer the questions and just waste the time. You should at least try to answer the questions. Don't be afraid to try. Don't be afraid to commit mistakes. From mistakes, we learn more. It is normal to commit mistakes. If you will not try, how will you learn? How will you find out that your answer is right or wrong? So next time, I'll expect that you'll try, okay? On the other hand, if you have different answers compared to mine, please comment it down below so I can check it and other learners who will watch this video can compare their answers to your answers. So now let's talk about how did you come up with the answers. What did you do in order for you to remember the important details in the story we've read? If your answer is you take down notes of the important details, then you are correct. <laughs> it is very important to note of the significant details in the story you've read so that you will not easily forget it and for you to better understand what you've read. Before we proceed, I will leave three questions hanging for you to think about it on your own. Then if you come up with answers for these three questions, please don't forget to comment it down below. Don't worry, there is no wrong answer for these three questions. I just want you to express your own ideas. Okay, number one. Why is it important to note the significant details of the story that you are reading? 2. Why do you have to value the animals around you? 
थ्री हाउ कैन यू शो रेस्पेक्ट फॉर एनिमल्स अगेन प्लीज एंसर दिस थ्री क्वेश्चन एंड कॉमेंट योर एंसर बिलो एस वेल प्लीज डोंट फॉर गेट टू लाइक दिस वीडियो इफ यू आर लर्निंग फ्रॉम माई एफर्ट्स सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल एंड क्लिक द नोटिफिकेशन बेल टू बी ऑलवेज अपडेटेड इन द लेसन्स वीडियोज दैट आई विल अपलोड हियर इन माई चैनल Thank you. Now let us have a seat work. I will give you the option to choose whether you will try to do it on your own or with a partner. I will give you a minute to decide. Prepare yourself with a pen and paper and look for a partner. I don't know if you're at home or anywhere at the moment. You can ask the help of your parents, brother or sister or even a friend near you. Okay, so timer starts now. Are you ready? Here's a short story for our seat work. I'll give you 5 minutes to read it.
I believe that's enough. You're done already with your reading. So now here are the questions that you need to answer. I will give you 10 minutes for this one. Okay, so one minute per question. Just write the letter of the correct answer. Read the questions very carefully.
Okay, time's up. So let's now check your work. Here's the answer key for the seat work. I will give you one minute to check all your answers. All set? I hope you learned a lot from our today's lesson video. Please comment down below the score that you've got from our seat work. I hope you got the perfect score. 10 over 10. Still, I believe you passed it and learned a lot. Again, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel to be updated to our next lesson video. You can also share this video to your friends and classmates for them to be able to study at home. Bye-bye! See you in our next video.